There we go. And all right. Well, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. We will be presenting Groundhog Day and a comic, sorry, an iconic comedy, Lessons Learned by Sharon Violini. So just a little housekeeping before we get started here. This session is being recorded. At the end of the webinar, I will provide links for accessing the recording to access this webinar recording in the chat. So please stay tuned. To ensure a high quality recording, all attendees are encouraged to mute your mic. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your Zoom control panel. We will get to them if time allows at the end. Now, without further ado, Sharon, take it away. Thank you, Marissa. Well, happy Friday, everyone. This has been a very fun presentation for me to you know, put together for you. Looks like we're a small group. This is a 20 minute presentation. And so I don't know if this is, you know, considered what the norm is since this is my first one, but I'll stop sharing the screen and then we can interact if you'd like. Um, I have 20 years of uh, legislative uh, background. I retired last year and I'm a, a PCC a certified coach and also a health and wellness coach. And when I think about Groundhog Day, I think about, oh my God, are we doing the same thing the same way? And, and how can we change our perspective? And how can we change our mindset and move forward? And so that's kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna have fun together in the next 20 minutes and we're gonna talk about this. So for those of you who haven't seen the movie in a while, I'm offering you a quick recap. So this is Phil Collins. He is the weatherman and one of the stars in the movie. And he is in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania to announce if it's Groundhog Day, what's going on in that in, on February 2nd. And he doesn't like his job. He's kind of mean and nasty. People really don't like him. And he goes through this time loop. And it's interesting because Different people have have uh, hypothesized that over the course of this Groundhog Day, he actually lives the same day over and over for like 30 to 40 years. And and so what lessons did he learn to be able to move forward? How was he able to get beyond those limiting beliefs? And we're going to go through some of the scenes, you know, but it's it's pretty funny. He's blown up. He has he lives life without consequence. He eats whatever he wants. He he's really uh, he doesn't really evolve until he makes change. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So it's Groundhog Day. What is uh, what if changing your circumstances isn't the answer? And what I'm talking about is if you're stuck, you can't change where you're working or you're just not ready to move on. You can't change your major. Maybe you can't, um, you, you go, your kids belong to the same soccer team and you can't change the, the people that you interact with. So what's left? How can you, how can you move forward? How can you build relationships? And that's what we're talking about today. You know, the thing about the movie that's so interesting and which makes it so fun is that Phil Collins lives a life without consequences. He can eat in this, in the first scene, he's eating all these donuts and he's eating all this terrible food. And his uh, coworker, um, Andy McDowell, she, her name is Rita in the film. She asks, aren't you worried about cholesterol? And then in the, in this other um, uh, scene, he's driving with the groundhog and he drives off a cliff and he's blown up. And he keeps, he keeps challenging and pushing the envelope. Now, all of us in real life, we have consequences to our actions, but there's a mindset is that we can think about of what if there weren't consequences? What if we could do things differently? We're, what if fear didn't get in our way? What if we could live life to the fullest? And that's one of the challenges uh, to think about today. So, when we talk about the movie and we talk about Phil Collins and relationships, his relationship with self and others, in the, one of the initial scenes is, this is Ned. 
and Ned is an obnoxious insurance salesman. And Ned keeps coming in every scene, he keeps coming at Phil. He's trying to sell, say hello, remind him of who he is. And I'm sure we all know someone in our lives that just, you know, rub us the wrong way. And it's interesting because over the course of the movie, their relationship changes. It goes from Phil running away from him to Phil punching him in the face to Phil making peace with Ned and actually buying insurance from him and building a relationship. So how do we do that? How do we change our mindset to build a relationship, you know, with people that maybe rub us the wrong way? Um, because we all work with them. And, and it's interesting, I put this, this lice little potholes because after every time after Ned and Phil interact, ex with the exception of one time, uh, Phil steps into a pothole and his leg is wet and he's irritated and he's like, oh my God, you know, you can just see the frustration in his face. And I know that we all live, I mean, we all step, we make missteps, we step in potholes and we wonder how can we learn from this experience? And I actually found a poem. It's called the autobiography in five short chapters. Um, and I'd like to share it with you because I think it's, it's really about the time loop. So I walk and it's also about anxiety and how we can get so anxious that we can't move forward. So I'm going to read it to you. I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm hopeless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Have we all been there? I walk down the same street. Circumstances are the same, just like in Groundhog Day. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it again. I fall into it. I can't believe I'm in the same place, but it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. So there's a little bit of that victim mentality and then I can't move forward. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it is there. I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It's my fault. I get out immediately. So what you're seeing is awareness and accountability. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. I walk down a different street. So when we think about how we're approaching life, are we learning? Are we aware? Where are we going? These are the lessons learned that I want to share with you. So you can be a, have a victim mentality where, oh, it's never going to get any better. And you can have limiting beliefs. I'm never going to be able to move forward. Or you can persevere and build a new habit and overcome active inertia mentality. For those of you who don't know what active inertia mentality is, Harvard Business Review calls it the tendency to seek cover, comfort in doing the same thing over and over. So you do this, and this is what happens when we get stuck. Sometimes we find comfort in doing the same thing because it worked before. But we all know that technology advances, we have to evolve in order to remain relevant in some sense. So how can we get beyond our limiting beliefs and develop a new habit and reframe a situation? Attitude is everything. And this is really funny. So in one of the scenes, Phil talks about that he's a god because he can blow himself up, he can um, jump off a building, and every day he wakes up and it's February 2nd. He's not getting anywhere. He's not, he's doing the same thing, but no matter what he does, he can't get ahead. Well, this is, this is what's interesting. Can we take time to learn and react different to, to situations, similar situations? Do we get caught up in the cycle of judgment where we can't for instance, when he's walk, when he keeps seeing Ned, the insurance salesman, and he punches him, you know, 
are we so judgmental that we can't look for or we can't get beyond the obvious? Can we find the greater good? Is there a gift or opportunity in each situation that can help us move forward? It's all about perspective. So here is a, the diner scene. There's several diner scenes in the movie and you've got Rita and Phil and Phil is, as I said, he's talking about how he's a God and how he's really unhappy and he can't move forward and he hates the town and he hates all the people. And um, Rita, played by Andy McDowell, is very upset with him and says, why don't you do something, you know, that's positive? Well, I don't, what can you do to, to change your outcome? Plus she doesn't believe him. So that's, that's, he's not very believable. So I, I want to pause here and, and ask you just to think about what could you do differently if time were not a factor? If there were no consequences, if you could um, look at a situation or an individual or a team or whoever you're working with and think about, hmm, how can I make a difference? How can I contribute? What can I do differently that would help move the ball or, or move my own, you know, my life forward? What would you do? And you may want to write it down or just uh, write it in the chat. It's up to you. And it's really about shifting your mindset. And so what does that mean? It means something different for each of us. But for, for Phil, it meant I'm not getting anywhere doing the same thing over and over. So maybe I ought to do something different. Maybe I ought to learn to take piano lessons. Maybe I learned to speak French. Maybe I should, and he does these things. Maybe I ought to do ice sculpting. And he starts, and by starting, he starts to change. So that's a question for you. Is there something that you want to do that you've, you've loved to do, but you just don't have the time? Is there a language that you'd like to learn? What can you do? What action can you take to challenge your limiting beliefs to move forward? And then lesson four is really about, this is self-compassion and empathy. So self-compassion for yourself, empathy for yourself, and, and the movie characters. Actually, throughout the movie, you see Phil evolving. At the end of the movie, he's actually likable. The townspeople like him. He brings his coworkers coffee. There, there's connection. He has, he saves someone's life. He saves a young couple who are, think, who are engaged. So what can you do to help foster self-compassion and empathy? And, and the other thing I wanna bring up is something called the STOP practice. And the stop practice is something that we learned in health coaching school. And so uh, Forrest Fine, he calls it, uh, lose your mind and come to your senses. And so if you're with people that are just driving you crazy, or maybe there's a situation driving you tr crazy, or maybe you're in the, the Starbucks drive-thru and it's just not moving quick enough, and you're just going out of your mind because you have to get to a meeting. What can you do? Well, stop and notice it. And then take three deep breaths. And a lot of people don't know how to breathe or they just take breathing naturally. And so what you can do is you can, you know, sit and just take a, a, a breath through your nose and let it out. And that will help um, calm you and help you know, lower your cortisol and that stress, that fight or flight response. And then once you get your breathing, you've taken your three uh, deep breaths, observe three things like, what do you see? What do you hear? Um, what do you taste? What are you thinking? What are your thoughts? Are you noticing your feet flat on the floor? If instead of um, reacting and having that fight or flight response, how can you get back in your body and really think about how you can approach change differently or the situation differently and then proceed mindfully. 
So that's the stop practice. And I hope that you can use it in your everyday life because it can help you um, from actually being like Phil Collins and punching Ned in the face. And the other thing I wanna leave you with is never ever give up. You know, throughout the movie, we see Phil make a lot of, um, of mistakes. For instance, he, re he really wants to get the girl. And in some scenes, he, like they're at a bar scene and he's talking to, um, to Rita and he says, let's drink to whatever. And she says, I always drink to world peace. Well, later he learns that when he takes her out the next day, because remember it's Groundhog Day and he repeats the same day over and over, they're sitting at the bar and he's learned from that. And so he says, let's toast to world peace. And she looks at him like, oh, I always, I always toast to world peace. So what is that about? That's about being mindful, having connection, active listening. So when you think about the people that you're around, whether it's, you know, your children's, you know, schoolmates, um, parents, your, your coworkers, you know, um, your family members, how can you listen? How can you find out and dig deep what matters to them? How can you be more connected and build connections? Because at the end of the day, you can't move forward. This is what ground, one of the lessons in Groundhog Day. It's hard to move forward unless you make those connections, you make those changes. And if you are successful in making those changes, um, you're gonna move forward like, like uh, Phil does. At the end of the movie, he actually, he gets the girl, he makes connections with the townspeople, he moves on to February 3rd. He is, his life begins to develop in a beautiful way. And you know what? What's so crazy about this is he didn't, he didn't change his coworkers. He didn't move out. He actually wants to move to Pexitani. He doesn't want to live anywhere else. The whole community surrounds him. So what can you do one tiny step that you could take to change how you embrace the world your workplace, your friends, your community, your loved ones. So these are the lessons learned. Um, learn from our mistakes. Really, learn from our mistakes. Adopt a growth mindset. You know, maybe something you make a mistake, you step in a pothole, the project isn't going well. How can you go ahead and, and change how you're doing things or have an idea and express yourself. How can you be vulnerable and make that uh, move beyond that limiting belief? Have empathy for, and compassion for yourself and others. And remember, change takes time. Give yourself a break. You know, if you want to learn something, do it and be, be mindful and be gentle with yourself. And I, I included this, this slide because as a final thought, you know, you may be, it's, it's all about, you know, if you don't try, if you don't try, you're never gonna be able to move forward. So how can each of us in our own way, either in our, our workplace or in our own lives, assess and say, you know what? I think this is worth it. I think I'm gonna try. And I included this, this yoga uh, stance because I wanna learn yoga and it's, it's something that I've always wanted to do and I always fall over. And so I'm going to start, that's, that's, that's what I'm going to start doing. What are you going to start doing? I leave you with that thought. What are you going to start doing the one step that can help you move forward? And, and that can be anything, anything at all. Improving your communication, taking on a new exercise plan. What is good for you? And this is a wrap. I'm going to leave uh, 10 minutes. I know we, for, um, for any uh, questions that you may have, I hope that you found this presentation um, helpful. And if you wanna come off mute and talk about any lessons 
learned here or the stop practice or anything like that, I'm happy to, um, to have a, a coaching conversation with you. Or if you have any comments on, on Groundhog Day, I hope you enjoy me for the, will join me for the Emotional Intelligence uh, program I'll be offering in October. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much for being here with me today. Um, so anybody want to come on or have any questions or comments? No? I um, actually came in a little bit late. Could you tell me what the first lesson was, please? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, who Can I ask who's asking? Oh, sure. This is Brenda Roper. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Okay. So um, I am going to just go back because the first lesson is kind of, if that's all right, it's kind of in depth. So when you're thinking about you know, how you approach life. Are you, and I'm not, you know, naming names, but are you, are you approaching it as a victim? Like poor me, or you have limiting beliefs, or can you build a new habit and have perseverance and look at how can I do this differently? How can I reframe my, the, the current situation and move forward? What's holding me back? You know, maybe ask some why, what, or how questions. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Is there um, any other questions? Even any coaching conversation or questions, if anybody wants to talk about that. Because really, Groundhog Day is really about how we can change our lives in our current circumstances and situation. Hi, I have a question. This is, my name is Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, so first I missed what kind of coach you were. You said, is it CCC? I didn't understand what that oh, was. Oh, okay. I am, so um, three years ago, well, I, I retired and I'm a professional certified coach through the International Coaching Federation. But I'm just finishing up my um, year long health and wellness uh, program so I can coach on health and wellness. And I'm also a Tiny Habits Academy coach, which um, teaches, um, I'm actually gonna give a seminar through CPS, is how to bring about change one small step at a time. So that's, uh, that's my coaching background. That's great, I love that. Yeah. Um, thank Have you. you. Are you familiar with the Tiny Habits Method? No, I Are mean, you, I remember reading a book one time about, I think it was actually, maybe it was the happiness project. Uh -huh. And she kind of mentioned about the, you know, the small, the small things that you can change that, you know, like this uh, screenshot shows about building new small habits. And then it kind of opens you up to different, different outcomes. It does. And so, would you like to know the, the benefit of starting small? Yes. It's not scary. It's if you start small and I know this sounds ridiculous and I'm going to be doing a presentation for um, CPS HR in January in the new year. But uh -huh. if you start small and I'm talking like, let's say you want to do one push up or you want to get your kids to start flossing their teeth, you start with one tooth or one push up and then you build on that because you build confidence. And really, that's really about what new habit and change is about. Building confidence one small step at a time so you can really make that transformation. It'll help you move beyond your limiting beliefs. What do you think about that, Jennifer? I think that that's, I think it's true. I think that, um, you know, that's, kind of it's kind of in the same um mindset as keeping small promises to yourself every day to mm -hmm. kind of change the outcome yeah. of you know something that you if you're not happy with the way things are about something just a couple small promises and it, like you said it builds confidence 
and then you can go for the big things because changing a big thing is hard and scary. It or is hard, and it's it is scary. scary. And if you think it's hard. No, you're you're absolutely right. And one of the things to help you to when you when you change a habit, if you really want to make it stick, celebrate it. Really tell yourself, like if you floss one tooth, maybe smile at yourself. Or if you do um, something, you know, one one push up, you know, give yourself. That's great. Thank you. Sharon, I don't know. Oh, you froze for a uh, second. Sorry. But we can't hear you anymore. Okay. There Am we still, go. Okay. Am I still frozen? That's odd. Okay. No, you're good. Okay. So Rosa said, can I read this real quick? Mm-hmm. Okay, Rosa says, this made me think about how miserable I've been since getting COVID three years ago and and still have long hauler symptoms. So all I do is think about how miserable I feel each day. It's I feel like it's Groundhog Day for me. And so I think I needed, uh, I think to distract myself about thinking about it all the time, I need to uh, take up ASL again. I really enjoyed this many years ago. Well, Rosa, first of all, and before we leave, I want to tell you how sorry I am that you have COVID and you have long haul COVID. Yeah. Um, that's that's really challenging. Yeah. And one, hmm. And one thing to try. I know this may sound crazy, but positivity. And when you think about. Um, in the tiny habits program, we have something called a Maui habit. And so how do you change your mindset when you feel so terrible and your body's just giving up on you? And so maybe one small thing is a gratitude journal, or maybe it's when my heat feet hit the floor, I'm going to say it's going to be a great day. And I know that sounds Pollyanna, but I want to share with you that I was almost in a wheelchair, um, let me see, about six years ago, and I was in a leg brace, and now I can walk. I walk with a limp, so what I'm telling you is don't give up. Move beyond your limiting belief. Use your medical providers. Use whatever you need and find that positivity um, to help you move forward because I know that you can find your health again. Is Thank there, you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. I know how hard it is, believe me, but I also know that by making small incremental changes and it may take you, it may take you three years. I mean, I, I was, but those three years of making the small incremental changes will help you move the ball forward. And, and when you look at like Phil Collins, 40 years, when you look at your life, it's your life and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, I've been working with specialists and every day is a different challenge. So you know, I just kind of have to look at things differently. But yeah, um, I, I decided, you know, after listening to your, you know, your training today, your course, I was thinking, you know, I do have to do something to distract myself because all I can think about is how I feel the headaches every day, the nausea every day, you know, just the, the stomach turning every day. It's, it's constant. And, you know, but it is my health. So I have to keep fighting for it. Fight for it. Cause it's, it's, it's what you got. And, and, and you know what, your body hasn't given up on you. You're still yes. here. So you thank know, you. I you're appreciate welcome. it. You have a beautiful weekend. You too. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Let me see. Uh, the tiny habits class. I, I don't know if it's made yet, but, um, uh, I'll look for it and see if it's posted. Give me one moment. Okay. And you know, if you guys, if you talk about health, if you want CPSHR to offer 
uh, six week health and wellness class, you need to let them know um, because that's something that uh, was given to me uh, through my health coaching program. You can look up Chris Cresser. He actually, um, Rosa, you may want to look up Chris Cresser. He actually talks about um, how to recover from COVID and he has some ideas. So um, he's a functional medicine provider. So maybe that's a resource for you. What was that name again? Uh, Chris Cresser. It's K R E S S A R. He gives a, he has, he's a, he's a master marketer, but he does have really good um, functional medicine research. And that may help you find a different path to help you on your healing journey. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I guess this is time. Thank you everyone for being here. I enjoyed it. And thank you for your questions. Thank you, Sharon. Appreciate your presentation. It was very excellent and great conversation. You're welcome. Um, Tiny Habits has not been formed or created yet. However, I'm going to post in the chat here a link to where you can subscribe to get emails to our trainings that we're going to have for the next four weeks. Um, it's a weekly email every Tuesday it goes out. So if you want to subscribe to that to see what trainings are coming out, please feel free more than you are more than welcome to do that with the link in the chat. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Of course, you're very welcome. And it was a great presentation. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Happy Friday, everybody. Have a great weekend. And thank uh, you for being here today, guys. All the right. recording you... will be available later this afternoon. Um, and please take a minute to fill out our post survey questions uh, to share feedback with Sharon today. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Have a great weekend. Bye bye. Bye. Peace. Thank you, Marissa. Appreciate it. Of course. Okay. I will um, email you the survey results and I'll also email you uh, the link to where you can find the recording. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you.